to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, I'm sure you've all had a chance to take a look at the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve this agenda? Also, I'll move. Moved. I have Jeff and John, it sounds like, a first and a second. Kim? Kim? We have first and second in the regular agenda. You're on mute. Council Member Carr. Aye. Council Member Rock. Aye. Council Member Keeper. Aye. Council Member Schaefer. Aye. Mayor Huber. Hi, thank you, Kim. And of course, the consent agenda. Hopefully, you've all had time to go through the bill list and take a look at the bills we're paying tonight. Uh, need a motion to approve our consent agenda, please. Motion to approve. Thank you. Second. Council Member Carr. Aye. Council Member Rock. Aye. Council Member Keeper. Aye. Council Member Schaefer. Aye. Hey, thank you, Kim. Uh, moving forward, Brad, looks like you're going to be up first. Um, Brad has a couple of things for us, starting with the 20 additional 2021 special roads projects. Go ahead, Brad. Uh, here, members of the council, maybe uh, I've got two related items here, one and two. Maybe we start with the second one first, since it's related to the first item. Um, well, item number two is uh, really a uh, surprise for us or the city of Grant. Uh, the state transportation bill included small city assistance this year. In the past, they've, they've done it, uh, I think the last time the transportation bill included small city assistance, it was for like $8 million in 2018. And this year's bill included $18 million for small cities assistance. Um, so that was a, a nice surprise for the city of Grant. Uh, in fact, I think the city of Grant was in the you know, the higher level of, of receiving receiving assistance. They our, our funding, I think, was around $89,000. And so that was a, a very nice surprise. So I just want to let, let the council know that that, uh, that money should be, or at least the money is going to be deposited in two halves, the way I understand it. The first half should be deposited here very soon, if not already. And then I think the second half will be deposited at the end of the year sometime in December. So um, I guess with that said, I would entertain any questions about the funding. Well, a couple of different things, Brad. I'll start and I'll just kind of kick it off here real quick. Um, so we got $89,362, which is the first time we've had this in many years. I, Tom and I remember when we got it, but we're probably the only council members that do remember when we got a little bit of cash for our roads. Um, so $89,362 um, and the line item or the uh, uh, agenda item here is consideration of additional 2021 special roads projects. Uh, as Tom, for those residents who are watching our budget session, hopefully there were some of you watching how your money is spent um, and how we plan to spend that money. Uh, we did just very quickly touch on some additional special road projects to enhance uh, safety and other aspects in the city. And one of the items that I uh, wanted to bring up was an additional guardrail on Ironwood Avenue heading north. Um, and that would be north of the address 11533. Um, north of that address 11533, there is a very steep drop off to Man Lake uh, on the east side of that road. Uh, looks to me, just as a layman, I'm no engineer, looks to me like it needs about 100 foot of probably cable or whatever the engineers suggest in order to make that a little bit safer. You can really get going before you hit that corner and then it straightens out. So you, you kind of tend to lose your back end there. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up as uh, one of the projects I would like the council to consider from my perspective. Thoughts, questions? Kim? Mr. Mayor and council members, for those that may be watching, I just wanted to make it real real clear what the uh, could be utilized for. Um, and I'll read it right from the league. It's the funding is for the construction and maintenance of roads located within the city and include land can include land acquisition, environmental analysis, design, engineering, construction, reconstruction, and maintenance, routine maintenance. 
Thank you, Kim. Sorry, I had to jump off for a second there and talk to a kid. Go ahead, Tom. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, in our guardrails, that I don't, I don't know, but we have extra money in our in our special funds too that or in our reserves we could spend. Uh, question: did, did we ever get? And I'm driven down. Well, I call it Woodpile Road, but it's Jeffrey, I believe. Uh, we did. did. Did we ever get that guardrail in there? Yeah. Okay, so that's done. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Then, that was it's exactly that same. Just so I can let me tell Tom real quick. It's exactly that same type of situation, Tom, where you're going where you're going around this long sweeping curve. Right. And then you and then you got to straighten out and you've got that big ditch, except this wall here you go down to uh, to Man Lake is about 40 foot. Okay. All right. Uh, it, it's you know, bad. You know, well, yeah, I would agree with oh. you, Mayor Huber. That I mean, it doesn't maybe look dangerous because you you can't really see the drop off because it's hit by a brush. But the car will go right through that brush and take that steep embankment. It's very dangerous. So it is but, very much so. Yeah. Hang on a second, Tom. Kim had her hand up, and I missed it. I was just going to add, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. I believe the last time the city did two guardrails, it was when you got these additional funds. And I'll just explain the process at that time. You just directed the city engineer to go get bids. They were brought back to the next council meeting and you guys voted on that. Okay. Thank you, Kim, for that uh, long memory on you. That's why you're so invaluable. So um, yeah, this one looks pretty dangerous to me. Oh, Tom, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, and I, I was gonna continue my point on Woodpile, but um, one of the first guardrails we had back when we started the special road project was up on Ironwood. And there are some other, it's a, there's some pretty steep drop offs up there that we could still do some guardrail with. So if we're going to target another area, I would think up on Ironwood also could use a little guardrail. There's so if I, under, if, if I understand you correctly, Tom, are you proposing that the engineer also look at Woodpile Lake for additional installations? No, no, no Woodpile. You said Woodpile was done. Ironwood. Yeah, it is. That, that section that we did. Yeah, but no, I'm talking. Not over on the east side. We haven't done it over on the east side. Well, I don't know that if we only... did over on the east side. I know when you come down the hill towards the lake, that mm -hmm. was... You're was heading cool. east at that point. So that would be the western edge. Okay. So when you're driving from the west to the east, okay, on Jeffrey, you come down and we did right there at that corner. And then we came around. But I don't believe the guardrail extends all the way around to the eastern side by Joyce's place. No, I don't think... I'm not sure we need it there. It's okay. not that okay. deep. I'm talking now. I'm talking up on Ironwood. I'm talking on the north part of Grant. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha, there's gotcha, uh gotcha. we put in some guardrail up there way back when, one of the first mm -hmm. things we did on our special road fund. And I think there's some more that could be needed. I mean, there's some there's some 25 foot drops right off the edge of the road up there. It's pretty and I, I would agree. Should we then, I don't know if the council would uh, would uh, be in agreement with this, but then direct the engineer to actually do a survey of Ironwood, Tom, and just determine where yeah. Yeah, I don't propose I know where to put the guardrail. Right, I think we need exactly. somebody to look at it. But I, I do know there's some steep drop-offs up there. And if engineering-wise, if it's possible to put some guardrail, which is another thing, then I think we should look at that. Those are That's another steep one that I know about that, that we could use some. There may be others, but that's what I Okay. Council members, part of the bid process for the city engineer would be to determine where they would be placed and how long the length. So that's right. A yeah. Makes total sense. Right. So that that would be one of them. Does anyone else have anything else that they would like to talk about, Jeff? Um, speaking of steep drop-offs, I know that Jocelyn, where it's been raised uh, on the gravel part, it's uh, pretty steep there, and I I believe. Uh, a resident had mentioned to me that uh, at a minimum we should put some sort of markers along the road. And I was kind of surprised that the contractor wouldn't want that, um, especially when he's snow plowing in the winter because that road is quite narrow and it wouldn't take much to slip off the edge. Okay. Um, so that would be a thought. No, we, we talked about that when we were raising it, Jeff. And uh, at the time, I, th I think we had determined we Either we couldn't get them in because the road was too narrow and there was, you couldn't stick them in the sides. I don't know. Brad, do you, do you remember that where clients raise that? It's, it's narrow on top and the sides are yeah, pretty steep. It's, it's on the inside curve. Is that right, uh, mm -hmm. Jeff? Uh, Council member Schaefer, I think the inside curve along the, the pond, I guess they're both ponds, but the inside of that curve was not included with the guardrail. And I think most of the times you, you accelerate on the outside of the curve and that's why we ended up putting the guardrail on the outside is to prevent 
the acceleration as you're going on the outside of that curve, but we can certainly put some on the inside too. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt, but most of the time the accidents are happening on the outside of the curve when people are going too fast in their own lane. You know, sometimes <laughs> you get people that are going too fast in the other lane. And, and so that's where this guardrail would help, but uh, we could certainly look at that too. I'm not sure if you're you're thinking of the correct spot, Jeff. Mr. Schaefer, could you uh, explain that again? We're Actually, going. farther farther to the south, where the road has been raised, it's basically a straight, oh, but it's exactly. very steep. You know, I raised it last two falls ago or two years ago. Okay, right, sure. right, right. Yeah, we gave I don't access. think it's practical to put a, a guardrail there, but at a minimum, probably some sort. Yeah, of I can definitely take a look at that area too. Yeah, right. that, that was the piece we raised for access to that cul-de-sac. Yeah, yeah. Right. so, and we had talked about markers at the time, and just right, we get a, we should really look at something. If we have to drive, you know, thin post on 10, 12 feet, whatever, we should probably get some kind of mark in there just for Ken and, and the Klein brothers, if nothing else. Yeah, and another, and another ahead, spot, uh, someone had mentioned to me, um, the ditching right by um, Victoria Station where the um, Justin Trail um, comes into Highway 96. That ditch is relatively uh, close to the uh, uh, roadway and it's relatively steep. And someone had mentioned to me there, at a minimum, just putting some basic uh, markers in there to delineate that steep ditch. Can we do that there, Brad, on that? So that would be on the east side of that ditch that uh, the Klein brothers dug out there. So close to Joel or close to 96 heading north past the barn. Okay, yeah. so, yep. I was gonna say that, I, yeah, th so I was gonna say that ditch is mm, at the most four feet deep maybe in yeah. some spots, yeah. probably closer to 96. Yeah. Uh, generally when they're that shallow, we wouldn't put in a guardrail, but we can, no. you know, certainly look at it. I know it's a three to one slope, <laughs> which is the max slope um, for that ditch is what we designed that to. So. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't support guard. putting a guardrail up, but no. I would support putting up markers of some sort. Okay, right? sure. Yep. We'll Jeff, is that it's it's Mr. Yes. Schaefer's deal here? So okay, he's That's okay. That's correct. With that. Yeah, not a guardrail, just markers. Just markers. Yeah. Right. How does the rest of the council feel about that? If you're if it, you're familiar with that, that situation. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Rog, Mr. Uh, Giefer. If it's if. If it's uh, if Brad feels it's necessary, then fine. And you do you all feel the same way about the raised portion of road that access that cul-de-sac whose name I forget right now, uh, putting the markers down there because I didn't hear anything from you on that one. <clears throat> oh, the first one. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. yeah. Okay. Jeff. Yeah, because it's too steep to do a guardrail up there. Right. You're yeah, talking you about like to have a guardrail there, but it's it's way too steep. Kim, did you want yeah, to answer and put a on guardrail to get it up there? <laughs> Kim, did you have some input on this? I thought you'd raise your hand. No, I did Nothing not. Else. Okay, I've got then anything else, Tom? Anyone else before I jump back in here? Okay, we have a very interesting opportunity on our hands, gentlemen. And let me explain it. When VBWD bought the 11 or 12 houses down there and took those houses out, destroyed those houses, there was one lot there that had a very nice pole barn in it, on it with a concrete floor, metal siding. It's stick built. Um, so it's there. The sticks are down into the concrete slab. Um, and unfortunately, because of the way our zoning is set up, uh, we've had a lot of uh, interest from residents, but none of them contiguous to the lot. And as you know, with our zoning, you cannot have a separate standalone building like that without a residence. We've always in dis, uh, discouraged that uh, so that people were not building large pole barns on out lots and that type of thing and then running businesses out of them that becomes problematic. So our zoning does not allow that. However, after talking uh, with VBWD at some length, uh, they would really like to unload that piece of land along with that pole barn and uh, kind of thought that we don't have a place to store any of our brand new signs, uh, any of our city equipment that we 
uh, use signs, um, any of the equipment that, for example, putting in the guardrails, putting in posts down there, doing all kinds of different storage things down there with, uh, with a building. So we thought we would talk to the BBWD about that a little bit, and uh, we did. And it sounds like they are very agreeable to letting that go for a very, very reasonable price. In fact, uh, for the land in a 35 by 45 pole barn, I believe, with 16 foot ceilings, a full roll up door and a personal entry that is in fantastic shape. Uh, I think a, a bit of on the order of $100 would probably get us in the door on that. Um, it is a very functional building. Uh, and again, we could use it for storage. Uh, the signs that we have at uh, actual contractors right now, um, we're, they're doing us a big favor. Hey, can we use your private land to put our signs on them? So we're not paying them extra for storage. We're not doing any of that stuff. And this type of situation would allow us to have some of that storage that, that most small cities need and, and already have. So for $100, I think uh, it's probably a good idea to throw a bid against the wall and see whether or not it sticks with VBWD. I think they're pretty anxious to have that in the hands of a responsible party, which we are. Uh, so those are my thoughts. And I think uh, doing that right out of the box and then maybe even in the future, in the future, not now, in the future, uh, all of us have lived through area times uh, in the city of Grant when both the county and even the state at certain times have run out of salt and sand. Or it was so cost prohibitive that we couldn't afford to go pick up that salt and sand in great quantities for emergency use even. Some of our intersections would get real bad. So um, that's something maybe in the future just to keep in mind for an additional use perhaps in the future, but not right away. So uh, thoughts on that $100 to grab some land and a 35 by 50 pole barn 16 foot ceilings roll up door uh, concrete slab thoughts, Jeff Schaefer. Uh, we'll just have to factor in uh, annual insurance and I suppose there's property taxes as well. So it maybe it'd be good to know what those numbers would be. It would be city city property with no income on it. So Kim, why don't you go ahead and take that? Uh, Mayor and council members, I did look into the insurance. Uh, it's a hundred dollars a year for that building. Uh, How much? I'm sorry. About six hundred. The property taxes would be minimal. It is not a buildable lot. So, um, and again, there's no tower on it like your your town hall. The other thing that I just uh, probably should make real clear, I did speak to the city planner at length about this and the, the city absolutely could purchase this property and keep the building without having to go through a variance process or anything um, as others would do because it would be the principal use. So there is a, a way for the city to just purchase the property and just utilize the building for as, as Mayor Huber said, storage. Yeah, that's a great point, Kim. That's right. There would be no variance involved. Obviously, with a uh, resident who would purchase something like that, they'd have to come from a variance since they're, they're violating the zoning. As a city, we wouldn't have to do that. Um, and it seems like an excellent opportunity and one that's kind of falling into our lap and hard to, hard to resist from my perspective. Other questions, Tom? Well, yeah, and you're going to just like, we could have more parks and grant, but you know, it's grass cutting and maintenance and there's going to be maintenance and grass cutting and there's some other stuff that we're going to have to do. Uh, the other question I have, are these currently available? I mean, are they advertising these for sale? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Cause I was approached by somebody who wanted to purchase one uh, and particularly this one. So what's the protocol as far as the city purchasing versus, I mean, is it, do we just put bids in and the, they decide what they want to do, whether they take it or not, and it's all up to the seller? How does that work? Kim, go ahead. Mr. Mayor and Council Members, there's the whole uh, process outlined on Valley Branch's watershed district, but he could have put a, a bid in at this point. I've spoke with the engineer over there several times. We've been in communication uh, even recently. Nobody has put an offer in for, for that property at this okay. point. Uh, we have the paperwork ready to go. Uh, if in fact, the council would like to put a bid in. And I will then also note that uh, the extra, the small city's assistance that you got, this would be an eligible expense for that. Okay. Which, which is why we're talking about it now. And unfortunately, it, it, okay. an individual buyer, while certainly anyone can make a bid, 
uh, the, as you know, Tom, the, the zoning process in that case, and I, I don't know how many times I've heard Mr. Carr say, uh, variances? No, we don't do variances. And, and in this case, we wouldn't have to worry about that. It would be city owned. It's, it's tucked far enough back, but close enough to the road for uh, a lot of different uses. And frankly, the storage use is what comes to mind right, right out of mind. We take one of those properties off the market. Um, we can store our, our signs down there every time it floods, every time we have problems, every time we run a pump to pump something out, we have no place to put it. There's, there, there's nowhere secure to put any of this stuff. So, Kim. I will just also add that pretty much town hall, basement of town hall is pretty much full. Um, it's also an issue getting down there during the winter. You can't. As far as maintenance, um, it really, I went out and took a look at it. It's, it's, it's a driveway right there. The field itself is not now being maintained. It's not buildable. So there's going to be, you know, native uh, plants and that sort of thing. And the area around the uh, pole building itself could be absolutely included in, in part of the roadside maintenance. Uh, Ken would absolutely go out and do that. Um, I do have some pictures that I can email you guys. Uh, boy, I recommend the city jump on this. I really do. Yeah, well, Tom, and Tom very well knows, being a real estate professional, that were we to jump on it and were we to include a couple of uh, caveats in it, and Tom well knows what those are, um, obviously, the council would have an opportunity to take a look at the property and evaluate it on a personal level, and then um, we would be able to move forward or not with that. Whether or not that would require some sort of a special meeting for us, I don't know, and I'll leave that to Kim. But it's an opportunity that's fallen into our lap soon, and I think we'd be foolish not to at least take advantage of it initially and do our research, Tom. Yeah, I mean, overall, I, 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 I like the sound of it for that price. I mean, it's going to, you know, nothing's free. So we'll have some maintenance and cost. And do we do, do, you know, do we have to do another ADT system out there? Is it worth it? Is it not? I mean, these things will come up, but minimal cost based on the fact that we're getting it for a cheap price to the fact of the variance uh, on this piece of property. We've never had a, a property that was basically non-buildable when it was buildable. So as far as it, would this lot always be non-buildable? Would would the pole barn need to be removed? I guess the planner says, no, we can buy it. We can keep it that way. That's fine. Uh, but if a private citizen got this property, I'm just saying, because I've had a conversation, if a private person got this property and wanted to keep it, I think we'd have to give that the same deference as the city uh, as far as a variance goes, because you can't build on it. And it was through no fault of us, through no fault of its nature. It's a flood zone. So, but I think it's a really good opportunity uh, if they have not received any bids and they accepted our bid, I think to the mayor's point, it would be great because we do have stuff scattered all. Hey, where are those road counters? We've been looking for those. <laughs> well, there's a couple of pieces of equipment we're missing. Tom. I don't know where they That's are. They blame funny. me for it. So yeah, yeah. so yeah. I don't They're know. They're in your There's garage. They, Kim. They, pro they probably are. I don't, I have no idea, but. No. Um, Kim, yeah. let me go to Kim. Tom. Okay. Point made. Good point. Mayor, Mayor and council members, uh, I've had several calls as well um, because it's non-conforming. The building is non-conforming. I've also had several discussions with the planner and anyone else uh, that were to purchase that property that wanted to keep that, that building there would have to go through a variance process. The reason the city, it's a little bit different with the city. Um, I've also had conversations with property owners where they wanted to do a lot line adjustment um, to include their current property with that property to keep the building and none of them were contiguous. Um, so it just, it hasn't, I've had many inquiries. Yeah. It hasn't worked out for anybody. Right. I think that it would work out for the city. Yeah. Um, yeah. I certainly have pictures I could send you right now. I, I, well, let's, I let's, let's stop. Let's stop there, Kim. The legal niceties in terms of us being able to use it have been explored. Yeah. The, the legalese of our use of it has been explored. The insurance has been figured out. The non-buildability of the lot has been figured out through the VBWD process. So the, really what we're looking at here is picking up a building like this at a very inexpensive cost. Now, that's not to discount will there be maintenance? Sure, this thing is in fantastic shape. Yeah. Fantastic. There's hardly a mark on the concrete floor. I'm not sure what he had in there. Whatever, whatever it was, didn't weigh much and it didn't make any marks on the floor. It's beautiful. So you could eat out the floor in the place. So it, it is that nice while there'll be some maintenance, while there'll be some land maintenance, sure, all that's gonna happen. But uh, you know, Tom, to your point, we laugh about that. And Tom, what Tom's talking about is a long time ago in the city, there was quite a controversy about some road counters 
that had gone missing. They were being used by various people in the city to count some of the roads so that we could set up that program we talked about earlier with Brad, and they were expensive. We don't know where they are. We do not know where they are as a city, and they were not cheap, okay? So those are the types of things I'm talking about, heading them off at the pass, whether it's what signs belong to us, what signs belong to the county, where our road counters are, where are the new guardrail posts that we just brought in and set down somewhere, and oh, look, they're aluminum, so three or four of them are now gone. It's This is the stuff that we head off at the pass for this price. We end up being a little bit more competent. We end up being a little bit better at the inventory of our capital equipment and gear. It's it just, we can't pass it up, guys. Let's, uh, let's ask for me at hello. With, with, <laughs> with, with. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I know I'm selling it, Tom. You're laughing at me. Go no, ahead, I'm, just, I'm just saying, and as any pole barn owner, I'm sure we'll fill it up. That's on. <laughs> yeah. they're, Mr. Gieber, they're never big enough. Yeah, no. No, Mr. I mean, it seems pretty. It seems like we're we're talking a lot when we don't need to. It seems pretty no, no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. Seems obvious. So, Tom, you in agreement? Yeah, I mean, I would approve a variance if a single person came and bought it. I would approve a variance from the city, but if we can scoop it up, I'm fine with that. So, I wouldn't have, John. John. Oh yeah, no, it's it's it's. You know, for 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 just putting in uh, a bid like that to get storage that we desperately need, uh, it, it's I I don't think I need to go see it. I can see a picture of it and say, yeah, let's just do this. I I just like full barns. It was fun. Um, it sounds like Mr. Geefer, you're in agreement. Mr. Schaefer, are you in agreement with us tonight? Yes, I am. Very good. Does any of the other staff have any input on this? Great, Kim. Mr. Mayor, Council Member, since you are all in agreement and some of you have said you don't need to see it, I would look for a motion to enter into a purchase agreement with the uh, Valley Branch uh, and make an offer of $100. Moved. Do we have a motion. So moved by Mr. Giefer. I'll second I'll that. I'll second. Go go up. Mr. Schaefer was first. Council Member Carr? Sure. Council Member Rogg? Yep. Council Member Giefer? Aye. Council Member Schaefer? Aye. Mayor Huber? Aye. Thank you, Tim. So uh, we do have massive reserves at this point. We're very safe in terms of those reserves. I think we all understood that those reserves were helpful in terms of getting us through uh, COVID uh, and some of the economic challenges that came with that. And uh, we'd like to keep them certainly still strong. Um, I have one other thing that you may wish to consider as a council. Um, this one is not nearly as much of a slam dunk as I think the last one was, but um, have looked at uh, just briefly at paving the town hall lot. And here's why, a couple of different reasons. Number one, you know, when I started, I was a, a young spry man uh, and walking into town hall, I darn near broke my ankle a couple of times on ice chunks and what have you. I've seen older people that we've had to the meetings uh, navigate those sidewalks in that parking lot very delicately. We know it turns to mud. Uh, we know that we have softball games there and we have no lines and people seem unwilling or unable to park in an efficient manner without those lines. There's a number of different reasons to consider paving that parking lot, whether they be safety, efficiency, it being the only asset that we have. Maybe it should look nice. Um, down to something just that simple. Um, I know we're gonna be talking about some town hall maintenance and, and maybe doing some things there, but I wonder if the council would consider doing something like that, at least going out for a bid, having Brad do a little research or Kim do some research and determine whether or not it's something we would like to pursue. And with that, I'll leave it on the floor. Kim. Mr. Mayor, I'm just confused. Are you on the same agenda item or have you moved on to the regular special roads funds or special projects? Did I did I miss that? I was gonna I was gonna put that in the small the small city transportation. That's what we're on of, right now. Yeah, that, and that's where okay. I think it belongs. Okay, all right. I just wanted to be clear. That's the money that we were gonna spend. It's the money we didn't have before, and I think it's okay. where it belongs. Okay. So I'm gonna throw it on the floor for conversation, gentlemen, and talk. Tom. Um. Once you pave it, then you got to take care of it um that's the beauty of gravel um you know and uh 
we can grade that parking lot. We've used it before for the uh, for the chips. I don't know if we're doing it anymore with a different way of maybe doing the seal crack and you know seal. You know they put put them down and you, you don't have to harvest them and get them back, sweep them up. But um, I'm just not sure that that is a good idea out there um, for as much use as it does get. Yes, it, it gets some use for you know for ball, but then it sits there a lot and doesn't get really any use. And, and I think the other thing that I'm worried, it's one thing to say, let's pave it. But as we know with roads, what's the base like? Because if we got to tear it up or bring in a lot more fill or dirt to, you know, shore up the base, what, you know, it's wet in certain spots for a reason. So you're not just talking paving it. You're talking putting a lot of money into it. So could well, we have but, an estimate? Could we have an estimate right, but, done? Well, that's, me, but that's what finish. I said. Have, I'd like to finish. Brag well. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so before we just pave, I mean, it's, there's a lot more to it than that. And then, um, you know, I mean, if it's, if it was reasonable to do Joliet, maybe, but I think until we get the full scope of what actually paving the parking lot means, I think I, I'd look at a proposal. I'm not real thrilled about it. That's where I stand. Yeah. Well, it doesn't get much use, so it lasts forever. And obviously, we don't just pave things. We go out for bids and, and have some coring done. Giefer, go ahead. Well, I think that was a question. I don't I don't think it was whether we do it or not. I think the question no. is, do we move forward? And Tom's, I think all your questions could be answered if we simply say, yes, it's, it's worth considering moving forward. So I'm definitely um, for moving forward um, and, and considering it. With a bid. Yes. yes, and for yes, all the but, reasons Mr. Mayor yeah. Mr. mentioned. And, and, and Tom is right. I mean, these things need to be explored. We can't just go, oh, we're going to, my proposal is we pave tomorrow. No, my proposal is we investigate it. We get responsible bids. We, we look at it and then we bring it back to the council. And then Tom's questions are answered and everyone else's questions are answered. Right? That's the only yep. responsible way to do it. Mr. Schaefer is next. Pardon me, Jeff. Yep. Um, I think we should look at that property and that building as a whole. Um, uh, we're, we're kind of picking apart now with uh, possibly uh, getting bids for paving. I think we really need to discuss that whole property, the whole building, the, the shape of the building, before we uh, <clears throat> even think about getting bids for pavement. Pavement could be a possibility. Um, and your point in the uh, entrance to the building and things like that absolutely needs to be improved. But we definitely have to look at that building and property as a, as a whole before we and Jeff, further. Sorry, Jeff. Um, <laughs> Jeff, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I, the only reason that I brought it up here instead of on line item F, consideration of town hall improvements, was because the money was here. And, and so we were, we were looking at capital improvements of whatever kind, whether they be guardrails or what have you. So I thought it more appropriate to bring it up here, but your point is well respected in the sense that considering it as an entire, it's the only thing we own, right? So considering it as a whole, um, making the entire thing as nicely as, as nice as we can for good reasons, perhaps does belong under F town hall improvements. No, 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 no. Right? No, who said no? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Hang on a second, no. Tom. Kim was before you. The action, Mr. Mayor and Council Members, the action here, if, if it's proposed that the dollars potentially be used for payment, <clears throat> the appropriate action here would just uh, direct the city engineer to get bids. It's simple as that and bring the bids back along with your guardrail and everything else. So, sure. Yeah, yeah, we can look at the project as a holistic project still, Jeff Schaefer. We can still look at it as a holistic project. And if you don't like the bids, it just gets, you know, tossed out. We don't, we don't do it. Tom, I'm sorry, I jumped over there for Kim. Yeah, and, and I guess, and I'll, Jeff, keep went after me and try to explain what, you know, you were saying, well, we could just look at it. But, you know, again, I'd remind the council that when we have our engineer do anything, it costs money yeah. and, you know, and time, his time. And if, if for the aesthetic reasons of, stripping mm -hmm. the siding off town hall and adding new siding to town hall after we took some windows over inside and made painstakingly care that we made them out of wood so they matched and we have an old gravel parking lot that kind of goes with grant and now we're going to pave it i mean that's what i'm talking about i'm not sure i want to do that and and it, not because of the cost 
you know, if it's $100,000 or $50,000, it doesn't matter if that's just not what we should do. And I think maybe what Jeff Schaefer was talking about as a whole package, maybe that's what we're thinking about. You know, uh, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to Jeff about it directly, but maybe that's what he's getting at. So I'm okay maybe doing it if it's cheap, but the part of me that bothers me is it's been that way for over 100 years. And maybe we should keep the same. So anyway. And so if I understand you, are you saying to <clears throat> both the parking lot and <clears throat> improvements to the town hall should be considered in terms of the windows and that type of thing, the historical nature of it? Well, we considered it with the windows. We, we did. And, and I sort of remember that. I don't pretend yeah. to remember the whole thing, yeah. but we were certainly... Uh, yeah. But, you know, did wood grain and <clears throat> and that type of thing so that we uh, so that we did as much as we could to make it look the same. But I, I just don't see and in a, very honestly, uh, a paved parking lot is not just aesthetics. We have paved parking lots. Any new business is supposed to pave their parking lot. At least it's in the ordinance. Does it get done? Every new business is supposed to do it for a very simple reason. Wheelchairs, ADA lines it's easier to salt and sand it's easier to plow it's safer i mean there's it's not just aesthetics i'm going to go to see a black parking lot no there's a lot of other things there that are that are important in terms of having that an accessible building for the residents who are many of whom are, are not getting younger so um with that said i would ask the council to sort of give a thumbs up to uh do the uh, 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 have Brad go out and get us some bids. And I am definitely looking uh, for Brad on a personal level to go get some bids. Mr. Rog, would you like to direct Brad to get bids on this? Yeah, it, it, uh, I know that it does cost money to get bids. I know that uh, we'd have to pay him to do it, but I guess if we at least had the, uh, the bid process going, we could just say yay or nay once the bids came in about the cost and the aesthetics of it. Uh, and then we could at least have a good conversation about that when, when we know what it's going to cost. So yeah, that's fine. Very good, John. Mr. Giefer, are you in agreement with having bids procured on this project? Yes. Mr. Schaefer? Um, I'm having a hard time with this one. Um, okay. I don't think so. I no think bids. Uh, we're too soon. Okay. Tom, bid or no bid? I'm with Mr. Schaefer. I mean, okay. at this point, I, 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 I think if we had a good guess rather than bids, I think if we can work off that, maybe. In the meantime, yeah. so we've, we've talked about town hall. Yeah, we've got uh, three to two. We're going out for bids. Jeff? Real, real quick, can we pay for the, the bid process through these funds? Yes. Yeah. So really, is it any... We, we were talking earlier about spending our yeah. reserves and now we're worried about getting a bid yeah. out of money that we didn't have before. I don't, yeah, so, I don't get that's the a principle about thing. thing. It's a principle thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, like, hand, <laughs> like handing yeah. out pole barns all by themselves. I'd, ra I'd rather spend three grand <laughs> on Brad going out and doing that on the roads than on the bid. That's all. Okay. That's, that's a principle well, thing. Yeah. Very good. Three to two. We're going to go out for bids on that one. Um, so we've got, looks like we've done some good work here, guys. We've, uh, we've got Brad looking at the Ironwood area for guardrails, um, looking at uh, signing or marking in some reasonable manner, uh, Jocelyn Road, that high section of Jocelyn Road, as Jeff uh, Schaefer uh, talked about, and then uh, hopefully being able to put some sort of markings on the uh, Jocelyn north of 96 where that drainage ditch rolls. Did you get all those, Brad? Yep, I did. Just in trail. Oh, fantastic. Did I forget something, Tom? You, fight, you forgot yours, Jeff. You said you wanted to do an up by Man Lake. Oh, the, the guardrails on Ironwood? No, that was the first one I started with. Oh, oh okay. I'm not yeah, talking the, Man Lake. I'm talking farther up. I thought you said Irish on Man Lake. No? <laughs> I'll say. I was wrong. No, no okay. Ironwood. Ironwood and Man Lake. Sharon. Okay. Sharon. Sharon's up. Uh, were we going to discuss uh, looking at brushing out of this money also? That additional um, catch up money for brushing? Not that I, that's not how I understood it. We were talking more about using our reserves in that case, because that's, that's really an immediate, okay. an, an immediate uh, uh, help and quality of life, really getting those roads cut back. Um, some of them are getting like tunnels. So yeah, I understood that to be a uh, reserve, Sharon. Okay, and so 
was that just moving forward or does it go under a different agenda item? Kim, I'll let you take that. The additional, Mayor Council members, it's my understanding that the additional dollars from reserves for a brushing uh, contract to get the city caught up is, is budget discussion and would be approved during your budget process. Right. But it, but it was my understanding that if it's going to be paid out of reserves and done this year, that the council would have to uh, at least do a voice vote on the record for that, not at a private budget meeting. Well, that, oh, that budget private. meeting was not private. Not private, but um, not the official record. Okay, well, I'll, I'll let Kim and yeah. Mayor and Council members, we don't need a motion to go uh, get quotes. We're not going out for bids. We're getting quotes. And there is a very large difference. Uh, we just need a couple of quotes for some brushing within the city. We'll get a couple of quotes on some guardrails. We don't need a specific okay. motion for that. Okay, so that, that changes the, the legal definition of what we have to do in order to take that action. Thank you, Kim, very much. It looks like we're pretty much done with both one and two, Brad. I'm not sure if you have something more to say on these two. No, I don't. Thank you, Mayor. All right, fantastic. We're going to skip ahead then, uh, see if I can't hit them all. City planner Jennifer Haskamp, not with us tonight. She has no action items. Our city attorney who is with us has no action items. And let's go ahead and talk about the new business, which is A, consideration of waste management, recycling, contract renewal. Kim, do you want to speak on this? You're kind of the expert. Mr. Mayor and Council members, I am not an expert on recycling. Um, oh, yes, you are. But our five-year contract is up with waste management. I brought it forward sooner than December, just so you could take a look at it. The prices are increasing to residents. Um, what they're charged monthly, they're paid through out of their property taxes. They started uh, next year, 2022, at 463. I did get them down to starting at uh, 455. So it'll accelerate there from there. Uh, at a, a rate of 3.4%. And Kim, just for the residents who are not, unfortunately, on our budgeting call, um, could we just explain just very quickly, give us a quick synopsis of how those dollars are paid and then the uh, recycling grant that the city gets, just so the residents listening understand that? Mr. Mayor and Council members, residents pay for their uh, this cost uh, through their property taxes monthly. The city has the contract with waste management. It was, it is state mandated that residents pay for or have recycling, whether they utilize it or not, pay for it. The city pays waste management uh, every month for those services on behalf of the residents. The city is reimbursed from some property taxes. And we also uh, get a recycling grant from the county every year to offset those costs. And get this, she claimed she wasn't an expert. I think she is. That was excellent, Kim. Thank you so much. Discussion on this, gentlemen. Tom, are you raising your hand? Yeah, no, just, I mean, yeah. I mean, we got to do it, right? I mean, what, do you, what, do you, what are you going to do? I'll, uh, I'll look for a motion to approve the recycling contract renewal with waste management. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Jeff. Second, please, gentlemen. Key for a second. Kiefer, I believe we need to have your voice Second. on that. Second. Yep. Council Member Carr? Aye. Council Member Rock? Aye. Council Member Giefer? Aye. Council Member Schaefer? Aye. Mayor Huber? Aye. Thank you, Kim. Let's move on to B, consideration of Washington Conservation District MS4 contract renewal. And Kim, could you um could you stop me where I'm wrong here, which is probably right at the beginning? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> so uh, this is the educational contract, is it not, Kim, to provide the education to the residents of Grant for the MS4 permitting? We've done this um, for quite a while. This is uh, I remember this being quite controversial back in the day. Can you uh, expand on this education program for us? Mr. Mayor and Council members, uh, the Washington Conservation District uh, works with many communities. They, when the new MS4 requirements came out several years back, they stepped in to help these smaller cities with the communication education piece of it. So it's just 
very uh it, all it is is renewing their contract i think sharon and i figured out it, it's an additional like 42 dollars a year um we pay them quarterly to have ms4 take care of, or wsb with the ms4 requirements take care of this um it would be a lot more expensive this is very economical for the city and other small cities that uh, participate and typically, quite honestly, this just would have been a consent agenda item, but you guys need something to do. I, I kind of wondered go. why why this was on here. The, yeah, the I think you cost, guys are getting I yeah. think you guys are getting bored. Yeah. I think you're yeah. not you don't know how to deal with a cohesive council. Uh -huh. This was a test. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. What, anyway. what it is is Kim Kim throwing stuff at the wall to keep us busy so we don't ask a bunch of embarrassing questions. Total cost on this, guys, is $742.85. And just as Kim said, they handle the education piece of the MS4 federal permitting that we don't have the personnel or the time to handle. They handle the whole thing. It's a very reasonable cost. The federal government mandates it. The water district steps in and provides a pretty valuable service here in terms of handling that piece of the MS4 permit. So with that said, unless there are questions, I would entertain motions. Don't I'll be shy. Motion. Motion. There we go. First and a second, right there. Councilmember Carr? Aye. Councilmember Rock? Aye. Councilmember Giefer? Aye. Councilmember Schaefer? Aye. Mayor Huber? Thank you, Kim. Yes. Consideration of Celia Worth endorsement for the Bronze Creek Watershed District. And I think it's very important to, uh, to point out that I think she stayed well in her lane, Tom. Um, she's been doing, she's been doing some good work. So, uh, looks like, uh, Celia is looking for us, uh, to, uh, endorse her for the Browns Creek Watershed District. I make Tom. a motion to endorse her for the Browns Creek Watershed. Nice move, Tom. Second. Very good. Council member Carr. Aye. Council member Rock. Aye. Council member Giefer. Aye. Council member Schaefer. Aye. Huber. Hi. Thank you, Kim. D, consideration of in-person meetings. I'm going to take this one, guys. We had a, a quick conversation last month about moving back to in-person meetings. Um, while I think a lot of us would like to do that, frankly, I'm going to make this short. Logistically, it just doesn't work. No matter what's, what's happening right now uh, with the variants or whatever they're calling them, um, logistically, uh, with the distancing rules still in place and then our cameras where they are in there, you go out there and you measure town hall and you go, okay, so I need to be six from him, six from him, six from him. And you start doing that and you've got 72 square foot bubbles, right? A bubble of 72 square feet. It doesn't work. We can't get anybody in there. And even if we do, our camera can't cover them. Now, some of our older members may say, you know what, you don't need cameras. It's not mandated. But it's that's if anything's if anything is uh, sort of what people expect. Those cameras are a large portion of what people expect from government these days. Being able to watch their representatives work and debate and that type of thing, and and it just wouldn't work. If we had any sort of a public hearing or a hearing where we would expect residents to come to it, we would immediately have to shift back shift back to Zoom because it it just wouldn't work logistically. Um, so while I think it was a, a great thought and I look forward to this hysteria being done so we can get back to uh, the, real, the real world here, uh, logistically with the facts on the ground, the way they are right now, this isn't gonna happen. So uh, any, anything to say on this one? I got Schaefer first and then Tom Carr. Uh, I was reading the uh, guidance from the League of Minnesota Cities and uh, you know I'm not an attorney, I don't, no, exactly. But from what I'm reading, it almost sounds like we are supposed to start in-person meetings next month. But I would like to have Mr. Schneider uh, say his word on that to make sure. Are you asking a question to Mr. Schaefer, the opinion of the legal counsel here, Jeff? That's correct. Yeah, okay. So Dave, do you have any knowledge on the uh, outlines there and whether or not our city hall with its limited square footage would be able to comply with those or would we just be physically unable to comply? Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Some, I think in the absence of uh, an emergency declaration by the governor, we're, we're going to get to the end of it and it may be next month. 
Um, one thing that some cities have done is to adopt a hybrid approach where some or all other council members are present and on camera and others, you know, less essential folks um, or staff or the occasional council member join in by Zoom. So the so-called high mm -hmm. approach is one that's been taken that I know of in cities that are constrained for space. So with that, you know, it'd be my suggestion that I maybe consult with the city administrator a bit and um, identify uh, either Zoom as a continually, a continuing appropriate option or suggest as I, I think may be the eventual path here, a hybrid approach. Okay, so before we, just hang on a second, Kim, before we That's go fine. forward forward with that, here's the problem. There is no high-speed internet access out there, okay? There's no way to hold Zoom out there unless we are somehow going to put some sort of a high-speed access there by next month, which is not going to happen. Um, you'll never get enough connectivity in order to do that reliably, which is why basically, maybe I should have covered it, but logistically, and that means space, um, electronic uh, ability to hook up and have the bandwidth to do some of this stuff, it, it just doesn't work on so many different levels. So I'm not sure if that's even something we need to do too much um, reconnoiter on, too much research on. It just isn't going to fly in terms of bandwidth. Tom, you had your hand up. And then Kim. yeah, I mean, I'm not afraid to go back to the meetings. I would like to go back to the meetings. I think what I'm really more worried about is going back to the meetings and then being told we can't have the meetings again. I don't want to be a bouncing ball. And I don't think that's fair to the residents. I think we need consistency. So until we get our brand new pole barn where we can have more room to set up for meetings, uh, I think I think I totally agree with the mayor. I think it I think we're kind of stuck at this point until this kind of all shakes out a little bit more. As much yeah. as I don't like it. So yeah. No, I would agree with you, Tom. I think that's just a sensible approach. Kim, you were you were moving and shaking and bobbing there. You got to be able to put something into this discussion. Uh, mayor and council members, I have nothing to say. I think you've covered it all. Very good. Mr. Schaefer. I'm okay with continuing the Zoom meetings as long as it's uh, legal. Um, right. right. That's, that's, that's my question. Yeah. Yeah. Legal, no, I can assure you. Let's continue. You, yeah, I can assure you we won't be doing anything that's illegal. As soon as we have direction from the state government that, that, that in-person meetings are mandated, Jeff, we will be the first uh, right. to, to do that and, and certainly not create any situation where we could possibly be seen as not following that guidance. Kim? Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, just to cover that aspect, and again, I am not an attorney, but I have been in communications with the league. Um, there is uh, talk out there, it's, it's not a law, but the, the Zoom meetings can absolutely continue if you have one staff person that is working at your regular place of where your meetings are. Again, we cannot do that because we don't have the high-speed internet. So I would just look for a motion that in the interim, you... Uh, make the city hall your official meeting place for the time being. And that would cover that because I am always here for these meetings. I'm not at home. I am here at the office. The office door can be open and people can come, come join us, join me if they would like. We don't have that opportunity at town hall because again, of the Wi-Fi. Okay, so the motion needs to be that the official meeting place of the city of Grant temporarily is City Hall in Willerney. Is that correct, Kim? That is correct. Okay, do we have a motion to that effect, gentlemen? Uh, temporarily, Mr. Mayor, temporarily yep. meaning until further declared by resolution of the council. And my motion is so, or my suggestion is so amended. Well, thank you. Uh, do we have a motion on that suggested motion? I'll make that, I'll make that motion as stated. Thank you. Do I have a second? Jeff, John, or Tom, second on that. I'll second. Thank you, Jeff. Council Member Carr? Aye. Council Member Rogg? Aye. Council Member Giefer? Aye. Council Member Schaefer? Aye. Mayor Huber? 
Aye. E, consideration of amendment to City of Grant Code of Conduct. Uh-oh. Hopefully we're not in trouble. Kim, I'll let you take this one. Uh, Mr. Mayor and council members, uh, many, many years ago, I believe it came from the auditors. The city was required to um, uh, adopt a, a city, of Grant, city of Grant Code of Conduct. All of you had that. Um, the amendment is, it's a one page, a one line to include that uh, use of issued laptops is allowed during city council meetings. The point of that is when you do get back into your town hall and meeting in person, you will need your laptops. Um, your your uh, packets will be on them, your agenda. And back in the day, we had to um, make it very clear that no electronic devices were allowed up at the council uh, table because people were um, abusing that. So again, the amendment here is just to add the last line that use of city issued laptops is allowed during city council meetings. And I would add, do not count. If you bring that laptop and you're counting on connectivity, don't. You're bringing that laptop in order to view the documents that, you, that are in your packet. Um, so connectivity is not gonna happen. We'll work on it and we are working on it, but it's gonna be a while. So need a motion to amend the code of conduct as stated by the clerk. I'll make, I'll that, make that motion, motion to adjust oh, first that. Second. Uh, I'll second. Council member Carr. Aye. Council member Rock. Aye. Council member Giefer. Aye. Council member Schaefer. Aye. Mayor Huber. Thank you, Kim. Consideration of town hall improvements. It looks as though um, our only asset to this point today, uh, our town hall has gotten two bids to uh, do some work on it. Kim, you've been very uh, closely involved with this. Could you talk about uh, some of what you've seen out there and what you've talked about with the contractors out there? Absolutely. Uh, Mayor, council members, um... I guess this kind of started all at cleanup day and council member Schaefer had mentioned that there's some drainage issues out there. And he uh, very knowingly pointed uh, out to me where we needed some gutters and where that drainage should be. So I went out and got some bids. Um, we did notice, I did notice that the painting there is, uh, it is not held up. We had a sentence to serve out there. Oh, Mr. Mayor, Tom Carr, what do you, it's, probably been seven, eight years ago. That was 2007 we did a restoration project. Was it yeah, it was closer to 10. Yeah. Well, this was no. a sentence to serve that just, we've oh, done just projects out okay. there. Yeah. They just we've, came out and painted because it was falling apart, peeling, it was waterproofing. Right. Yeah. So the city had to buy the paint and paintbrushes, that sort of thing, and sent that out there and painted the entire building, which quite honestly did save it for, for several years. Um, the building is back in that same bad shape now. It is peeling. It needs to be restored. When I had uh, some contractors get some bids for painting, um, they basically said it would be useless. The uh, Just painting it is not going to help the building. It, it, things need to be replaced. It is falling apart. So then we went in the direction of some siding. Um, I did call five contractors to get bids. I, I heard back from two of them. The intent is to get the uh, gutters done as well as siding in the same exact kind of uh, color, make it make the building look the same. And they were detailed bids. You can see what they outlined in, in terms of, of improvement. And uh, I would recommend if the city moves forward to uh, approve the low bid. Yeah, Kim, let's uh, just talk real, real quick. Um, so when they were bidding on this, you made it clear to them we were trying to preserve the look of the existing building, correct? Yes. Okay, yes. and the, the colors and the lines, that won't be changed for the most part of the minuscule changes, right? Correct. Okay, yeah, the gutters will change. That places need gutters like forever since it was built. Um, yeah, we've got the two bids. Hopefully both you gentlemen have them, or all the gentlemen have them. It's uh, New Life Contracting at 36500 and uh, I be, believe Brueggemann came in at 39725 So questions on those or the project overall? Kim, hang on. I can't uh, Mayor and Council Members, just to be clear, Brueggemann came in at 39 just for the for the siding only? 
And then there was an additional bid for the, the gutters. Thank you. I just saw that. Pardon me, Kim. You're right. Okay. Gotcha. And New Life came in at 36.5 for the whole package. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I did read that one right. Okay. I believe Mr. Schaefer was first. Um, I see uh, New Life is, it seems like a fair price uh, for the work, but I think we really got to um, really look at that building closely. Um, I think once they start digging into that building and remove inside and they're going to find um, other issues that are going to add to the cost. Um, I, some of the things I've noticed is um, the, uh, the front entrance, the front door, the whole base, uh, sill base of the door uh, behind the concrete in there is all rotten. It's in bad shape. I think when they start taking off, uh, you know, like the, uh, the soffits and fascia, some of your uh, rafter tails are going to be rotten. There's going to be uh, uh, problems there. If you look at the roof, um, it's sagging pretty noticeably uh, at the chimney. Um, so what I would like to propose, instead of um, um, having a contractor, uh, you know, start looking at siding, is I would propose that we authorize a building inspector to look at that building. We uh, have an inspection done, a complete inspection, uh, looking into the attic, um, looking into the basement, looking at the foundation all the way around, um, checking all the aspects at that building um, so we know what shape it is in before we authorize any kind of work on it. Um, we also need to look at the drainage, um, especially the walkout area. Um, I know that uh, basement has a, uh, a dehumidifying system and it appears that that system runs continuously. And um, I think, um, it, and it shouldn't have to run continuously, but because of the drainage issues, I think that uh, area at the walkout in particular gets saturated and that concrete slab the building is sitting on, is this, it's like a sponge and it soaks up that water. I was looking at the utility bills um, in the past like six months and like the last utility bill was $172. And that's for a small unoccupied building. Um, that's over double what my home would be. Um, I look at some of the other months and the, the, the prices are very high. So I'm sure it's due to that humidifier going continuously. And I know we have products store, stored in there, printers and paperwork and things like that. And if that dehumidifying system cannot keep up, those products are not going to store well down there. So what I would like to uh, uh, propose or see what other people do is um, authorize a building inspector uh, to uh, inspect that building and file a report with us before we make a decision what to do. Mr. Giefer. Uh Yeah, I tend to agree with Jeff's comments there. I mean, when you look at the, um, the line items in the code, it looks like mostly just a lot of a lot of cosmetic stuff that um, might be hiding um, more structural damage as um, Jeff is mentioning so I, I think it's worth having a deeper look in there make sure that you know, we're fixing everything structurally and not um, you know just the, the outside cosmetics Tom. I may tend to ramble so bear with me um, yeah, 2007, it's in the comp plan. There was a restoration. Um, the building is one of the ones designated with the Rutherford House, the Axdahl's House, Masterman's House, the, uh, some historic buildings in Grant. Um, so when we are looking forward to redoing the building or working on the building, we've tried to fix it. We've tried to paint it, but we want to keep the same look, Okay. Uh, one of the things I'm going to digress for a second and get back on track is that we're talking about LP siding, lap siding, which is great, but LP lap siding has a texture unless they can get it without a texture. So it has to, if they, if we do this, it has to look the same. Um, if you go to Stillwater, they, they have 20 things you got to do to those old houses. You cannot just slap lap siding up on those houses. You got to do all their steps. They want to keep it the same. So the question for us as a council or we can do what other councils have done as you drive by the old Fraconia Town Hall or whatever 
maybe that maybe they still use theirs i'm just using that for example and build you know because we deserve a new municipal building for us to sit in don't we we should just build one no we like our town hall so if we're going to fix the town hall it has to be functional it has heritage if we should keep it we don't have to but we should and to to that end to what jeff is saying you can't do it halfway because I think we kind of did it halfway in 2007. I think we ran out of money. Um, the the building itself, I think, could be saved. I think I think it would be a nice spot to have, you know, the meetings. I think it works, um, but it's going to need extensive work. And fortuitously, we're on Zoom. We're not there. They can tear into it and for months. Just like the old church in downtown White Bear Lake that they're remodeling, I think in the condos. I'm not sure what the, or the, the playhouse. So, so if we want to do something like this, I'm I'm totally agreeing with both Jeff and Jeff that I think we need to have a plan. Now, that being said, does it mean we can't start with the siding and put the gutters on? Yeah, I think we can do that. I think we can get it. I think we can get it sided and we can get the gutters on. And I think we go to the next level with that. Again, we do have extra money in our general fund. We only so far have one asset. So we should treat the old the old town hall well and make it the same as it is. Because the last thing I want is the old people in Grant coming after me that we changed town hall. And now it doesn't look like the same town hall. So I think we got to keep our heritage. I think we, and if we're going to do it, we might as well do it right to Jeff's point, both Jeff's points. So I think totally agree with them. Uh, but doesn't it doesn't mean we can't get started, okay? And to that end, you know, I I would I would make a motion to go with the uh, new life contracting, just get started on it, as long as the lap siding and everything is smooth and it looks like the cedar siding that's currently on there. Okay. We need a second, Jeff, before we do anything else. He's got a motion on the floor. Do I have a second or the motion will fail? There is no motion. The motion fails. Let me go ahead and just jump in real quick, guys, just real fast. This thing is built in the 1900s. Okay. Uh, I look at the square footage and then I start doing the division in my head. I've owned uh, about 19 houses myself and uh Frankly, 99% of the problems in, in any house was identified by Jeff Schaefer right out of the box. It's water. And the water out at this place is not flowing away from it. Gutters will solve about 80% of that problem. He's right. We're saturating the water around the basement. The basement's sucking the water through. The, the uh, system is having to pull it out of the walls and the floor to get rid of it, which is one of the reasons for the pole building. But this thing is, what, about 700 square foot is what I measured out as. I'm not willing to put uh, too much money into it. At some point, we're gonna have to take a look at that. But Tom's suggestion, and I didn't make a second Tom because I wasn't ready at a couple of the things here, but I agree with Tom. Tom's right. The interior of that building is beadboard. Now we can go ahead and seal the exterior of that building with the siding and get the gutters up. If we want inspection, all we have to do is, Tom's well aware, all we have to do is say, we'll allow a destructive testing which all that means basically is we say to the inspector, you can pull off a piece of beadboard and point your moisture meter at it, right? Tom's well aware of this stuff. Point a moisture meter at it, pull off a couple of pieces of beadboard, go up into the attic, take a look at it, give us a recommendation. But getting the siding on and the gutters on as soon as possible is key. So I, I gotta agree with Tom 100% here. In, in terms of making this thing like new, I'm not even sure the structure's possible has the possibility of making it new like that but certainly getting the siding on and the gutters on is key mr mr geifer um yeah so my question would be then if we do that would that prevent us from doing any possible more okay then yeah i would be okay with that too, then. Yeah. just i, I don't want to see us do yeah, no, sorry, Jeff. Let me answer that question real quick. It's beadboard inside. There's 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 no sheetrock in the thing, right? And the ceiling has an entrance, right, Tom? Yeah, I mean, we don't even know what's behind the side. No. There could be nothing. It could be stuff with newspaper insulation, for God's sakes. Talk about 
you know, expensive for electric, the white, everything. I mean, once they get the siding off, there's going to be all the stuff that Jeff was talking about. It's, everything's going to open up and we'll yep. fix it as we go. But as soon as we get the siding off, fix what we can and, and that'll, everything will open up. You won't even probably have to open up the inside. So yeah, you can seal it. Now you've got it seal sealed it. with Tyvek wrap, right? Yeah. Now you got it sealed, it's right? Sealed. But, yeah. but to your point, Tom, let's talk about this just structurally for a second. Right. If we get it on there, we Tyvek, if we get that on, we get our gutters on. If we have to go inside because we've got rod, we've got knob and knob wiring, we got wiring that's coming apart. It's beadboard inside, guys. You yeah. go like this, you grab it, you pull it off. There's your wiring, right? There's no sheetrock here. So if there's there's stuff in between there and there, we can get to it and do those things. As Tom said, hey, we're in Zoom meetings. So if we need to do that interior stuff or even the top stuff, right, we can do that. So let's get rolling on the siding, seal it, and then move forward with our findings that we found. Well, and just as a reminder, there was nothing. There was a back colony living up in the attic. I mean, they had to yeah. remove. I mean, it was yeah. bad. Bad. Okay? And we got rid of all that and we sealed it hopefully okay but i mean yeah jeff's shaking his head go ahead to jeff Shake. no jeff yeah jeff just next that's that's fine and i and i wanted jeff to kind of hear that stuff first go ahead jeff schaefer you're up yeah yeah uh, speaking of bats yes i'm sure there's bats in there because there's multiple holes in the in the fascia but i i really think it's important in in uh to do an inspection and maybe Tom, me, you being in the real estate business, you uh, know uh, a, an inspector that would do that or maybe Jack Kramer would do that, I'm not sure. But maybe we could get this done re relatively quickly, you know, and I don't know what an inspection would be, 400 bucks or something like that, but boy, I think it would be money well spent. Um, there's so many other aspects of uh, that building before you put on uh, the siding. Um, you know, that front step probably has to be removed to re replace the rotted uh, uh, under the door and, and then the, uh, the roof sagging. You need to get up in the attic and maybe try to um, support or, or brace around the chimney. Maybe that chimney should be removed um, so and get rid of it completely, possibly. But I really think it would be, a, uh, it'd be money well spent to have a, a inspection and I would think we could get it done relatively quickly and then on the depending what the inspection finds then we could probably authorize the uh, the siding but uh, I would really push for an inspection first yeah go ahead okay Tom go ahead talk about inspectors um well yeah and I think maybe Jeff maybe maybe there's some confusion I don't I don't think and I think what I've said I, I have no problem getting an inspection I have no problem doing other work but when the boat's sinking, you bail the water out and you worry about how you're going to fix the boat later as you find stuff. And, and the, the, it's, it should have had gutters years ago. And so it needs gutters. And so it needs siding. That's only one part of it. And I don't think that infringes on anything else that you just talked about. I think, yeah. I, you know, and then the question becomes, to Jeff's point, how much money do we want to spend on the old, I'm going to say girl, but guy, <laughs> whatever. It's, it's the building. So how much are we going to spend? Well, we've, we've kind of been committed to that. It's in the comp plan. We don't have any intention. I have no intention of building a nice municipal building for us to sit in. So then we have that. And, and yes, we're, we're going to probably dump, we'll probably dump another 50 grand into it. That's okay. Because it's the only asset we have. And we're going to keep it and it's grand. But to, to the point is, I have no problem with everything you said, Jeff. We should get, I, that's fine. But that has nothing to do with throwing siding on the house, on that place and putting in gutters. And I, and and it's August, okay. So we need to get going. I just yeah. power washed my house today. <clears throat> they got to come and watch it. Jeff knows he came over and gave me crap for doing it. So it's like, but I it, it needs to get done because it's August. So yeah, let's, I think let's get it done. It, and then and not. they can work in there, turn the heat up. They can do whatever <clears throat> they want for months. We got months of Zoom meetings and get it right. done. I'm 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 behind getting that thing straightened out as to your point, Jeff, Mr. Yeah. Let, let's, let's not be labor. We, we, the, the, the siding and, and these projects, I'll be there in a second, the projects and, and the siding can get done and never, and Schaefer, it, it wouldn't preclude any of the inspection. Yeah. He'd still get to all of it. That's my whole point of having beadboard. If you want to look at the walls, you take a piece of beadboard and you pull it off. You can go all the way through the thing. 
And there's also nothing wrong with us deciding, hey, we want to have an inspector during the installation. So a two-part inspection, an inspector there while they're pulling the old siding off so we can take a look at that. And then the inspector to come back to check the roof and the chimney and the foundation, all that other stuff, right? So totally agreed. It's just, we got to get that sucker sealed up because you're right. There's a lot of holes. John, go ahead. I'm sorry. So as, as, as far as the uh, improvements goes, I think I have to agree that if we can, um, you know, pull off the siding, check the situation, new Tyvek, new siding, as long as it matches, as Tom said. And then, you know, if the roof is sagging, that's that's a separate issue. And I think, you know, a good engineer can can make that stop sagging. And so I think we should do this. And I didn't realize um, when Tom was was saying that, you know, we should probably get the siding and gutters on now and it won't preclude anything. The only issue that I would have is, is just make sure that the foundation is in compromise with all that water through the years. That's the only thing. Because if, if we do put the siding and and um, uh, tie back and siding on um, and gutters, and the foundation is compromised, now we've got to you know you got to lift the place to put a new foundation on, and it's, it's it's it gets expensive as you guys know. So that's the only thing yeah. I would just probably say: look at the foundation. Yep. Gotcha. Gotcha, John Kim. I think just based on uh, on the discussion, it. it if you want to move forward with the siding and the gutters, I will certainly work with Jack Kramer and meet him out there to take a look at that foundation um, and anything else he sees as red flags. But I, 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 I do think you should move forward. Like council member Carr said, it's, it's August. It's, we got to get on their schedule, but I can yeah, we meet with Jack Kramer ahead of time. It, and that's good. And then he can uh, perhaps not, we're going to, we're going to, uh, we're going to take Schaefer and then we're going to be done with the conversation. I, I ahead, need to add Schaefer. something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Something. Real quick. Go ahead, Mr. Schaefer. I, I say we do both. Let's, uh, let's uh, go with the contractor and let's go with a, an inspection as well. The contractor right. probably can't jump on it right away. He's probably going to wait. Maybe it could be October, maybe in November before he does. I don't work. want, I don't want the inspector there, Jeff, until the siding's off. Because he's useless until the siding's off. He needs to be able to see inside of it. So he can be he can be there concurrently. Jack can stop by while they're pulling the siding off and take a look at it. Tom? Well, right. And Jack can crawl up in the attic or maybe go in the basement. And that's right. fine. But to your point, Mr. Mayor, you're correct. But here, here's my thing. I don't want to just, okay. And, and if they can't get at it till September, it's kind of a moot point. But if we're going to go forward, I had my motion on the floor that we take this, this, uh, new life contracting and move forward and it didn't didn't go but also concurrently with that i think we ought to have some money on the table because we're not going to get together and vote so we need to have some money in the kitty kim do we have any money in town hall maintenance or not right now Forty five thousand. Uh, mayor and council members you actually always have uh money in town hall maintenance as well as town hall improvements and over so, you have done some so if somebody oh, yeah. if they run into some issues we can take care of them without having some big council meeting and we can Correct. authorize some, Jeff to you to go forward. Mr. Mayor could go forward and, and get the, get whatever it needs to be fixed, fixed. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Correct. We, we've got $45,000 sitting there. If we can get all that done. And then Jack is, Jack will be involved through yep. the process to Mr. Schaefer's point. He makes a good yep. point to have Jack involved in the process, yep. pulling it apart to John's point, checking the foundation before we put the, Right. before we put the siding on. Right. I mean, those are all excellent points. And Jack, as our building inspector, could certainly handle that. And I think Kim has already volunteered to kind of spearhead that inspection with Jack. So let's move forward. Tom, would you like to restate your motion? Yes, Tom. Oh, you want me to do it? Okay. Uh, to your yes. motion, why don't you go ahead and restate well, that I one that didn't get a second? Well, I, th I thought if it failed. I have to start over. You so, do. Uh, Go ahead and restate it. I will, yep. I will make a motion that we accept the new life contracting uh, bid to do the siding and the gutters on town hall, providing that the LP siding they're using is not the rippled, it's the smooth, so it matches the smooth cedar siding that's currently on the building, and, this, and the fascia and all that the same way. I want it to look the same, uh, with no texture in the LP. I, I assume they make that, but I don't know that. If that's if that's not the case, then I think I have a problem with it. But if that is correct, then I would make a motion we accept their bid. 
I would provide a friendly amendment for your consideration just very quickly, Tom, that Jack Kramer, our building inspector, is involved with inspecting the building as the siding is pulled off and prior to that inspecting the foundation. Sure. And he should be. And I think he usually is. But yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. John, do you have a second? I'll second. I Very second. Good. Thank you, John. Councilmember Carr. Aye. Councilmember Brock. Aye. Councilmember Giefer. Aye. Councilmember Schaefer. No. Mayor Huber. Okay. Moving forward, no unfinished business. Some discussion <laughs> items. Any staff updates? We've got some staff here. Now when I say no staff updates, city council reports or future agenda items, guys. Have it's anything else on your mind that you'd like to have on the agenda for next month? Or in Kim's words, has this taught you a lesson? <laughs> 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 anything, guys, for next month that you can think of? No, okay, let's move forward then. I don't have anything either. Mr. Rog, I think it's your Turn no, no, the, I think it's Tom, the I think box. Tom Carr's turn. I no. think Tom's turn. Oh, oh John, I got a tickle. I got a tickle. John Rog is oh. in the batter box. John, go ahead. All right. I think it All got right. me the laryngitis. Yeah, I'll go. Matamide Public Schools Board Meeting, Thursday, August 12th and 26th. Matamide District Education Center, 7 p.m. Stillwater Public Schools Board Meeting, Thursday, August 12th, Stillwater City Hall, 7 p.m. And the Washington County Commissioners Meeting, Tuesdays at the Government Center, 9 a.m. Thank you very much. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second. Kim? Council Member Carr? Aye. Council Member Rugg? Aye. Councilmember Giefer? Aye. Councilmember Schaefer? Aye. Huber? Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. We'll see you next month at 6 o'clock on November the 7th for a second budget meeting. And I'd appreciate it if some of our residents showed up to watch that. Thank you all and have a Thanks. wonderful night. Take care. All right. Good night. Good night.